You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Yo, 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 this is Bruce Edmonds from Packers Without Borders, and you're listening to J.J. Leahy and Cheese and Packers, the winner of the 2022 53-man roster prediction. If you need to get content on the 53 and inside depth, the expert is J.J., because I suck. It is time. It is time. They can't be the Packers. No. Are you crazy? You're listening to Cheese and Packers, a project powered by the Packernet Podcast Network. I'm your host, JJ Leahy. I'm in full-on dad mode. I got an infant strapped to my chest. She's asleep at the moment, but she's been pretty fussy, so I'm actually going to keep this episode pretty brief. So uh, I do want to look at the new practice squad and the moves that came today, and I want to look at who else is out there that the Packers could pick up. Last week, I pl- actually I didn't play it for you. I told you we had a voicemail from Sloth. Well, Sloth called back in again this week. I think this has to happen. I'm just going to play the voicemail for you guys. Hello, JJ. This is Sloth. Who's the one guy that you will flip bricks if they get cut? I don't know if this will get to you before cut, but I hope so. Bye. So there you go. This is what comes through in my voicemail. You guys get to enjoy it too. Um, Sloth called in last week. We answered his question but didn't play his voicemail. We're playing his voicemail this time. So if you guys don't want to listen to Sloth, then send in your own calls, and I will play them if they're better. (laughs) So, who's the one guy that I will flip bricks? Haven't heard the expression um, said in that way before, but I appreciate it because it um, is PG rated and will fit on the show. Uh, who's the one person I will flip bricks if they get cut? Well, obviously the cuts are already done. Uh, this episode always goes out on Wednesdays, so did not have the opportunity to answer to this or answer this beforehand, but I did just kind of answer it in my head when the voicemail came through. So I thought, all right, I want to look at who is a realistic cut. Not talking like, you know, Devondre Campbell, David Bakhtiari. Who's a realistic cut that would just devastate me. And it was Tariq Carpenter. Tariq Carpenter did not get cut, thankfully. But I just, um, I don't understand the Tariq Carpenter hate. I guess I shouldn't word it like that. The, the concern that everybody has for Carpenter. Hear my kid squeaking at me down here? I'm sure it's getting picked up on the microphone. Carpenter, um, I think, has a lot of potential, especially on special teams. Um, I know some people are upset about how he played in the preseason on defense. I kind of just don't care. I mean, what, what are you expecting out of a seventh-round rookie safety who has the body of a linebacker? Um, I, I think it's going to take them a while to figure out what sort of a role he can fill on defense. Um, I don't expect hardly anything from any rookies. Uh, maybe a first rounder I'm, I'm expecting some contributions from, but I mean, even the fact that um, Devontae Wyatt is coming along slowly, it just doesn't concern me at all. So, um, but Tariq Carpenter, I just, I like his skill set. Um, I really like what I think he can do on special teams, and, and that is why I think he was drafted was for his special teams contributions. So he never came off my 53 and he made it. Um, Looking at uh, the practice squad, it looks like it's going to be Danny Etling, 
uh, Patrick Taylor and Tyler Goodson, Travis Fulgham, uh, possibly Juwan Winfrey. That one is unconfirmed. Uh, Goodkin said that he wants Juwan Winfrey, but so far he's not there. So maybe they're having a hard time coming to terms. Uh, maybe Winfrey wants to uh, explore other options. Not sure. Uh, Caleb Jones, the tackle, did get signed to the practice squad. Cornerbacks Rico Gafford and Keandre Thomas made it, along with Benji Franklin, who's a really tiny but very fast um, DB that we picked up from Jacksonville. Uh, linebacker Ray Wilborn made it. You knew he would. Uh, I'm expecting him to get elevated a couple times and play some special team snaps. That's that's just my expectation. Um, Goody's been talking about how he really views this roster now as a 69-man roster with all the uh, flexibility they give you with the practice squad. Um, so I think we have to start kind of thinking of some of these practice squad guys as kind of just junior members of the roster. At outside linebacker, uh, Ladarius Hamilton and Kobe Jones, I think both of these are excellent decisions to keep these guys. Along the defensive line, Jack Heflin, who a lot of people were surprised, got cut. I did have him on my 53, but he um, didn't make it. And then Chris Slayton, who I know is a big fan favorite. I haven't seen much from him, um, but he's there. And then... Um, couple unconfirmed guys. Like I said, Juwan Winfrey is unconfirmed. Uh, kicker Ramiz Ahmed. Uh, Goody made it very clear that they're intending to bring him back, but so far he's not listed. Um, and then the final guy, so Micah Abernathy got cut today. He made the 53. Then we picked up safety Rudy Ford from Jacksonville. Uh, two DBs from Jacksonville, Rudy Ford and Benji Franklin. Benji Franklin goes on the practice squad. Rudy Ford goes on the active roster. And so Rudy Ford got Micah Abernathy's spot. So um, he took to Twitter and was expressing some frustration, which you can understand. So I don't know if he's going to want to re-sign to the practice squad. I, I think the Packers would like to to, um, to keep him. I mean, they put him on the 53, so they like him a lot. They like him more than all the other guys they put on the practice squad who did not make the 53 initially. So I think they're going to try. Uh, it's just a question of if he wants to. Also, he does have to clear waivers first before he can get put on the practice squad. So Juwan Winfrey, Micah Abernathy, and kicker Ramiz Ahmed, those are the three guys who we are still waiting on. So who's out there that we can go get still? One of the first things that I decided to take a look at was who um, that has recently been cut has the highest special teams grades. And... The first guy that pops up with the highest special teams grade in the preseason this year is a guy that Packers actually have familiar with. That is wide receiver wide receiver Malik Turner. Um, he and Malik Taylor were both brought in in the 2020 offseason. And uh, Malik Turner was a former Seahawk, I believe. Um, uh, I, I liked him a lot more than Malik Taylor, but Turner ended up getting... Um, let go during the final cutdowns. He was just released by the 49ers. So this is a guy who I would not be surprised to see them go pick up. He's not on anybody's practice squad yet, as far as I know. Another guy, Shane Zilstra, is a tight end who was just released by Detroit. He had the third highest special teams grade in the preseason. And one of the reasons why I kind of uh, circled him is we have zero tight ends on the practice squad. Uh, Elise Mack, uh, Sal Canella, and the hapless Nate Becker all uh, cleared waivers and so far have not been brought back by the Packers. So safe to say there's not really an interest there. And as far as I know, Dominique Daphne is still unemployed. Um, I don't understand why they haven't brought him in. Maybe they will. But Shane Zilstra maybe is an option. Uh, Zilstra is a 2021 undrafted free agent originally to the Minnesota Vikings. Um, I mentioned the uh, Lions are the ones who just uh, cut him. Um, for 2021, he didn't do a ton for Minnesota. He had a 61.6 grade. But for Detroit in the uh, preseason this year, 91.7. And he played well in all three preseason games. He got better in all three started out at 77.3 then went to an 84.2 and finally 91.6 so nobody's picked him up yet 
I just, I wouldn't be super surprised. Bring him in, give him a look. You know, it's funny, a couple of other guys who are really high up uh, in terms of preseason special teams grades, Isaac Yadam and Tony Brown. Kind of funny. I don't expect either guy to come back, but uh, just interesting to see those guys there. Matt Areza was released, but since we are not the Cleveland Browns, I don't see that happening. Uh, wide receiver Preston Williams was waived by the Dolphins. I'm a little surprised he hasn't been picked up by the Bears, honestly. They've been picking up everybody. Uh, in a minute here, I'm going to go through some of the um, some of the other interesting moves that have processed in terms of guys getting picked up. Uh, Bears, for example, got Alex Leatherwood. But the Dolphins waived uh, Adam Pankey and uh, offensive lineman Adam Pankey and wide receiver Preston Williams. Both of those guys are intriguing. Um, I don't know that Preston Williams has ever really done much. He had kind of one okay year, and then you know the rest of his of his time in Miami, he's been pretty underwhelming. Patriots did waive tight end Jalen Weidermeyer. You may remember him. Uh, being the guy who was super high on everybody's draft boards, and then uh, it turned out that his um, RAS was like a .01, which is basically what Jonathan Fords was, <laughs> and he immediately fell down and ended up not getting drafted at all. Um, so he was cut by pff, Titans or Colts or somebody. I think it was the Titans. And um, and now the, the Patriots have waived him as well. Uh, but you know what? For special teams, I really, really would be intrigued. Always... Always have been interested in that. The Patriots also waived Brad Hawkins. He was a cornerback I liked out of Michigan. He played opposite, um, uh, what's the guy's name, Dex um, Dex Hill? I almost called him Dax Shepard, who's an actor I like. Uh, but Dax, or uh, Brad Hawkins was a guy I really liked. Um, he played really well on special teams for Michigan as well. That is a guy I would I would really try him out in a heartbeat. Bengals waived long snapper Cal Adamitis, who um, a lot of people were interested in. I think he was basically the top long snapper in the draft. Um, you know, and, and I, I don't have a problem with uh, Jack Coco, but Cal Adamitis is darn intriguing. I mean, it's fine. Jack Coco won the job. Um, haven't seen any reason yet to be concerned about him. I just feel like uh, Cal Adamitis kind of came in with a, a pretty high ceiling. Um, in you know, relative in terms of how high your ceiling can be as a long snapper. Steelers waived running back Master Teague um, out of Ohio State. I have always maintained that Teague offers basically nothing as a running back, but as a special teamer, this guy. Let me let me just tell you, if the NFL doesn't work out, Master Teague needs to go do like the. Uh, what is that show? American Ninja Warrior or whatever. He's just a freak athlete. The dude is like Superman with like uh, no real football IQ. <laughs> um, but as a special teamer, I, dude could be a career special teamer. Uh, very fast. You just got to teach him a little bit of discipline. Um, something I think he could. I I think he could do a lot better uh, blocking on returns than he ever could as a uh, as a, a running back. Jay Sternberger is out there. No, thank you. Tons of former Packers getting released uh, in the last couple days here. I don't know. I mean, put Jace on, on the practice squad, I guess, just because we don't have any tight ends, and he does have some familiarity with the system, and he is very athletic. I just, I don't know. I, I never liked the Jay Sternberger draft pick to begin with, so... I'm not super eager to bring it back. Here's one that's intriguing, although we do have two running backs on the practice squad already. Philip Lindsay waived by the Colts. Man, that's one I would consider. He was really good for a couple years, and he's he hasn't been terrible since then. He's just never been, uh, you know, special. Dennis Kelly got waived by the Colts. Nah, I think we have enough guys. The Chiefs waived safety Zane Anderson, who only played in two preseason games this year, but he's pretty darn solid. Um, his best game came in week three against the Packers. Had a 71 grade. Last year, he graded out well in the preseason as well, and then he only played four games for the Chiefs. 
on special teams. He had two kind of average games in weeks one and 16. Uh, his best game came against the Bengals in week 17 at an 86.2 grade. And then for some reason, it just fell apart uh, against the Broncos in week 18. He played 20 special team snaps in that game and came away with a 38.3 grade. Now, if you're wondering, is this just a, an issue of like he finally had a substantial amount of snaps to show what he had? He played 18 and 17 snaps in the previous two weeks. So, I don't know. Something else was going on, but he just kind of fell apart against the Broncos. Now, one of the big names that everybody's talking about from the Eagles, uh, safety Jaquiski Tart. Listen, I'm all on board with this, but I've been asking for Jaquiski Tart for a while. Um, he's been available a few times, and the Packers have just never brought him in. Um, he's, I think, good on defense and special teams. Uh, last year, he had basically an average grade overall. Um, he had one really good game, one not so good game, and the rest of the game's basically average on special teams. Uh, then this year in the preseason, again, just kind of average. Um, but on defense, he's really not a bad player. Uh, he's a guy that I really think could step in and be safety three. Um, he's kind of a high, low, high, low guy, but uh, the highs vastly outnumber the lows. He gets like mm, four, probably four uh, low games a year last couple of years and uh, just a bunch of really high games. So I like Jaquiski Tart a lot. I'm really unsure what's going on there and why he can't seem to find a home. But uh, he's a guy I would for sure – be excited about and the other guy uh the eagles also released anthony harris longtime minnesota viking basically everybody's on board with this um and i'd be fine with it i don't think it's going to happen uh, the, the biggest thing for me with anthony harris and we kind of we just brought in rudy ford so that might be our only safety move here anthony harris basically graded out the same as kevin king last year which is not bad they both were fine um but Kevin King already has familiarity with our scheme. Uh, he played quite well as a uh, slot corner last year, and and uh, I think would be fine at safety. I would do it. I'm, you know, Kevin King still doesn't have a job. We will see what happens. Um, I, I I guess I would have put money by now that he'd already be a Packer again, but he's not. So, uh, but that's a guy I'd be interested in is either Anthony Harris or Kevin King or Jaquiski Tart. The big thing I'm looking for here is some help at edge rusher, and I just don't see that coming. I had somebody ask me about Jesse Loquetta, who was waived by the Cardinals. I don't see that one happening. Um, Goody had three seventh-round picks before Jesse Loquetta went, um, and then Samori Toure after that. So he had a lot of opportunities to take Loquetta, um, a guy who was basically in college was only a pure pass rusher just never showed anything at all in terms of ability to stop the run or drop into coverage. Just very low athleticism. Um, I just, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. He just does not feel like a uh, Packers uh, linebacker to me at all. Another DB that I liked uh, safety, Leon O'Neal weighed by the 49ers uh, a little while ago. Another guy I really liked in the draft. I thought that he was um, really not a bad player at all. Uh, Leon O'Neal was one of the higher safeties on my draft board, actually. So he's out there. He's available. How about Trace McSorley? Dude, I would do Trace McSorley. Get rid of Danny Etling. Bring in Trace McSorley on the uh, practice squad. I'd do that in a heartbeat. All right, I told you it was going to be a short episode today. I'm going to take a sponsor break right here. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about some of the moves that have happened in um, well, I, I, the NFC North, but also... Um, just the NFL in general with, with teams slash players that you guys care about. We'll do that and also take a look at new edition Rudy Ford. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. 
Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Survivor 46 is here and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast. And we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcast. So the big exciting news for the Chicago Bears was they were able to claim their entire starting offensive line off of waivers from everybody else's trash. So that was cool for them. Uh, Alex Leatherwood, uh, first round pick it just what last year, 17 overall by the Raiders. Uh, dude sucks. I, I'm not going to lie. I was r- happy to see when Alex Leatherwood got released. And I know it's mean because he's a person and his feelings matter and his life matters. But I always get annoyed when, the media just kind of decrees like that, you know, so and so draft pick is the unanimous consensus dude to the Packers, and then I look at the guy and I think he just sucks. And I thought Alex Leatherwood sucked in college. I did not understand the hype around him at all. And everybody was like, "Oh yeah, the Packers if they don't take a wide receiver, they're taking Alex Leatherwood for sure, man." Even though I think that uh, if he went in twenty twenty one, that was the year they took a cornerback. Stokes, of course, but Alex Leatherwood, I never got it, and now he's a bear. So Alex Leatherwood, guard, and Tevin Jenkins, tackle turn guard, they can go be uh, mediocre to terrible for the Bears. Um, They also took uh, tackle Armin Watts from the Vikings, who's a horrifically bad football player. (laughs) Uh, They got linebacker Sterling Weatherford from the Colts, defensive end Kingsley Jonathan from the Bills, cornerback Josh Blackwell from the Eagles. Um, So those are four defensive players. These all go on the Bears' active roster, not their practice squad. And they also took tight end Trayvon Wesco from the Jets. So if you look at the the three teams who claimed the most players off of waivers, which, uh, let's see, the Bears, Jaguars, Giants, three terrible, horrific teams. Makes sense. Everybody else is getting rid of their trash, and uh, a team like the Bears is like, oh, man, you're letting that guy go? He's way better than what we got. (laughs) Uh, The Vikings were busy boys. They got Jalen Rager from the Eagles. Yeah, if you haven't heard that one, sorry to break that news to you. I never liked Rager as a draft prospect very much. Um, I mean, I didn't think he was, like, trash. I I viewed him as, like, a second, third-round pick. Did not want him in the first round. Um, and then he's been kind of buns so far in the NFL. But the the Vikings got him, what is this, they traded a seventh-round pick and a conditional 2024 fourth-round pick. Uh, don't know what the conditions are. I would guess the conditions are like he still has to be on the roster by the end of the year or something like that. Really a just super low-stakes trade. 
Packers were in the mix for this one, allegedly, but Packers are in the mix for everything. So I don't know how serious this was. I, I have to imagine it was semi-serious, but if you don't give up a seventh and a conditional fourth for a, uh, what, this third year uh, first round pick, I don't think you're that seriously interested. And I'm not blaming the Packers. I, I, I would have been slightly annoyed had they done this for a fourth and a seventh. I think it was a fifth and a seventh, maybe. Um, but also, it's conditional, and I we don't know what the conditions are. Anyways, uh, Ty Summers is now a Jaguar. Um, wide receiver Tyler Johnson, released by the Buccaneers. This was a, a, a big talking point. He got claimed by the Texans. And uh, Kellen Mond, the much maligned quarterback of the Vikings, is now a Brown. I'm not sure how that happened, because... Uh, to my knowledge, Kellen Mond is not a criminal, so I'm not really sure why the Browns want him. And if you care about the Lions at all, um, they did get rid of Tim Boyle and David Blau. I understand getting rid of Tim Boyle. I I guess I understand getting rid of David Blau as well. I just have always kind of liked Blau as a backup quarterback. But, um, I mean, their, their starting quarterback is not very good. And um, I was talking to some Lions fans who were really hoping that the Lions would be in the mix for Jimmy Garoppolo. Of course, he's staying in San Francisco. But in true Lions fashion, they did pick up a backup quarterback from the 49ers. It just happened to not be Garoppolo. It's uh, Nate Sudfeld. So there you go. Lions doing Lions things. I think they're going to be a good team this year. Um, but again, they might just still be held back by how lions they are. Oh, I see some information here. So the uh, 2024 conditional fourth round pick from the Vikings to the Eagles, if he doesn't hit certain statistical marks, that pick will de-escalate to a fifth-round pick, that via Adam Schefter. So, I don't know, man. Seems like a pretty good trade to me. I'm not, like, super unimpressed with the job that their new GM is doing there in Minnesota. Gotta see what they're doing. Uh, They get rid of Amir Smith-Marset. I fully expect him to be a bear by tomorrow. <laughs> oh, breaking. Uh, 49ers cut running back Trey Sermon. Th- man, everybody's going to be in on that one. Trey Sermon. So I forget where he transferred from, but he was a transfer to Ohio State um, and then had kind of a sucky most of his year until the uh, last, like, three, four games of the season when he really turned it on. I'm a, I'm a big Ohio State fan, if you didn't know. And I immediately uh, took to um, the draft community and said, don't don't get fooled by Trey Sermon. <laughs> the 49ers took him in the third round, which made me so happy. Um, and then they took my guy, Elijah Mitchell, in the what, fifth round, sixth round, and I was super sad because I wanted Elijah Mitchell bad. Trey Sermon is out there. He's not without talent. You know, I would... If the Packers brought him in, I would... I'd say, all right, yeah, let's let's see what he can do, um, but low expectations. I, I think he could do something. He just hasn't yet. It is kind of crazy that they uh, they waived him. All right, let's talk Rudy Ford. Um, he's uh, as far as I can tell, he's a your new um, safety three for the Packers. We haven't had a safety three. Um, I was surprised we didn't keep Sean Davis, but I've never been a big Sean Davis fan anyway, so I wasn't disappointed when we cut him. Um, and then Jonathan, uh, not Jonathan, Vernon Scott. Never liked Vernon Scott. So um, really fine with moving on from him. Uh, Rudy Ford. So first of all, Goody said this is a guy he's been, he's, he's had his eye on for quite some time. Said he was uh, surprised that he got released um, and kind of pounced on him immediately. Uh, described him as a, a fantastic special teamer. Uh, said that he will play defense as well. Here's the quote. Obviously, Rudy is a very accomplished special teams player in this league, one of the better gunners in the league. He's got the speed and physicality that we certainly covet. We were looking at that situation for a while. A little surprised he got shaken loose, but when he did, we were ready to get on that. So he's a 2017 sixth rounder out of Auburn, uh, drafted by the Cardinals, most recently a Jaguar. He's got 59 career tackles, 11 for the Eagles in 2020, 7 for the Cardinals back in 2018. Uh, 29 of his career tackles have come on special teams. 
Fun fact, he actually holds two uh, records in the top five. What is this? I think specifically only for the 2020 season, but um, in the top five fastest recorded speeds by a punt gunner. He comes in at number two and number three with 22.36 miles per hour and 22.19 miles per hour. So that was pretty cool in 2020. Um, our gunners have been kind of atrocious uh, for a while. So, man, if he could get down field and if Pat O'Donnell can kind of angle his directional punting a little bit better, this could be game-changing for Packers uh, punt coverage. And really that would be kind of a kind of a lot of new faces on special teams. Uh, Dallin Levitt, Keyshawn Nixon, Tariq Carpenter are going to be core special teamers this year. Uh, Isaiah McDuffie, Tyler Davis was retained, I would say, almost exclusively for his special teams role. Even though the Packers do like his physical uh, tool set, he's, he, he made the roster because of what he does on special teams. But again, Goody also said that Rudy Ford is going to um, be playing on defense as well. Yeah, I hear you, sweetie. Somebody has an opinion. She's waking up, and I think she's not a fan of Rudy Ford. Probably because she sees his 33.7 <laughs> grade in the uh, first preseason game against Cleveland. Um, he actually got to play four games this preseason. How? Uh, the Jaguars played in the Hall of Fame game, and he actually participated on special teams there. Oh, and on defense. So uh, both defense and special teams in that first preseason game against Cleveland, he was atrocious. He was excellent on special teams and defense. Average in weeks two and three on special teams. And uh, 67.9 and 67.1 on defense in games two and three. Also, he didn't play much in week one he had uh 16 total snaps which was the lowest of any game in the preseason his highest was 49 snaps in week three so one thing that you see consistently is that um he does he doesn't do a ton in run defense at least in this preseason um pretty pretty reliable in coverage though uh high 60s 70s uh, the problem is that last year in the regular season Although his grades were kind of okay, um, he gave up a just abysmal amount of yards after the catch last season. So first of all, he gave up 83% completion um, percentage. It's tough when you say percent and then percentage. 80, 83% completion percentage. He had 286 yards total that he gave up, but 201 of those came up after uh, the catch. Targeted 47 times, didn't give up any touchdowns. Uh, he did have one interception, zero pass breakups. I'm, I'm not really thrilled with him as a defender, if I'm being honest. Um, looking back at 2020, he only played in three games. He had a total of 47 snaps. Um, kind of more the same. The yards after catch was down to just 22 but we're only talking about five targets, three receptions. So what is that, like seven and a half yards per catch? I had to pause my recording. My infant daughter was having a nightmare. I didn't know that a newborn could have a nightmare, but that was definitely a nightmare. I had to wake her up, and now she fell back asleep again. But she's dreaming a little bit better. Uh, while I was doing that, I looked back at his previous years, 2017, 18, 19, and he played uh, considerably better than in, um, oh, in 2020, I think I forgot. That's where I left off, off was 2020. So 2021 was kind of the only year he had a substantial workload. And the the biggest thing, you know, that you don't like is all those yards after catch. Um, run defense, he's definitely a liability. Uh, tackling, he's been a pretty darn good tackler, so I like that. Um, what was his missed tackles? Let's see. One, two, three missed tackles total, and that's out of 39 tackles made. So 5.9% uh, missed tackles. You know, not too bad. 
you're talking about your third safety. Uh, I think he's mm, probably not one of the better third safeties in the league. Still would like to upgrade the position. We did go through a lot of safeties earlier in this episode that I would be interested to bring in. Problem at this point is, who do you move on from? I think the obvious answer is Dallin Levitt. I don't think they're moving on from Tariq Carpenter. I just don't see that happening. Not not uh, this early in the year. One interesting thing, he actually had a sack last year. So, that's cool. That came against uh, Matthew Stafford. One thing I think I forgot to mention was his relative athletic score. So, he's a little short at 5'11". Um, 205 pounds. He grades out as having poor size for a safety, uh, but elite speed. His total RAS is 921 out of 10. So pretty good. He's got nice big hands. Uh, his arms are long, uh, blazing fast, 40 yard dash, uh, 4.4. That's good enough to get you a 9.8 out of 10. His speed score is quote elite. So, if nothing else, I think that Rudy Ford on defense um, is a slight upgrade from Henry Black. So, you know, at, at, at the very worst, you're not going backwards on defense and hopefully taking a step forward on special teams. Alrighty, that's going to do it for me for today. Thank you so much for listening. Reminder, you can follow me on Twitter at JJ Leahy, that's L-A-H-E-Y, to stay up to date on all things Packers or to submit questions for the show. Don't forget that you can send in uh, questions via text or via voicemail. The phone number for that is 231-714-4195. And if you'd like to support the show and help me uh, continue to do this, patreon.com slash JJ Leahy is the best way to do that. For now, I will talk to you next week here on Cheese and Packers. Thank you so much for listening. Have a fantastic day.